And so um, just to let you guys know, we are going to record this and um, go ahead. And if you're not speaking, put your mic on mute. And then um, if you want to raise your hand and say something either to add your personal story or to um, ask a question, um, whatever you want to do, raise your hand, um, and then we'll just go in that order. Um, because I definitely want to hear your stories um, and record them for the, the world to hear. Um, sorry, I'm trying to navigate admitting people because there's still more people coming in, which is awesome. So, um, yeah. So anybody want to start off and tell us your story? Anybody want to raise their hand? Okay. <laughs> no problem. I will. Uh, I can, I can get started. Em. I have no problem. Awesome. Telling my tell, story. Yeah, tell us what happened before you were on carnivore and, um, uh, yeah, just go ahead, Justin. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So I've been carnivore since April of 2019. So I'm on almost, uh, at the three year mark, which is amazing. Um, but before carnivore, um, I had severe chronic migraines that went on for about a decade. Also had severe chronic sinus infections, actually had uh, sinus surgery. So there's nothing up here. I'm waiting for my Michael Jackson moment or like my <laughs> nose is just going to fall off my face. So it hasn't happened yet, but I won't be surprised. Um, and then uh, so that's just a really quick thing. But growing up, I was always sick. So I always had some kind of stomach issue. I remember always taking antibiotics or having to take out antibiotics all the time as a child, um, throat infections, sinus infections, um, not too many ear infections, though. So I, I, if there was anything to be caught, I would catch it, basically. Um, what happened in um, 2019 is that I got in a severe car accident which left me in a really bad pain. Uh, before then, I was managing my chronic migraines. I was getting about one migraine a week, which I know is not amazing compared to those people that have ever gotten zero in their entire life. Uh, but I was getting them weekly still, and that was better. So when I was first diagnosed with migraines at age 20, um, they were daily. And uh, I luckily had a neurologist that was kind of cool, and she let me know, hey, if you keep taking what's called rescue medication, the uh, triptans, uh, the way that you are, you're going to end up uh, with seizures by age 40. And I was like, that's not good. That's worse than having migraines. That's even less functional in some way. Plus, I'm sure I would still get migraines, right? So it'd be migraines plus seizures. So it's like, sounds pretty fun. Wow. Life would get really fun after age 40, right? And so I started talking to her and she kind of gave me like a quasi migraine diet. Um, after that, I ended up being able to get into like some supplements. So like butter burr, magnesium, uh, fever few, things of that nature, which did help. Ended up talking to a natural path, did a full allergy panel. I'm allergic to everything, of course. Um, and so she put me on a gluten-free, dairy-free diet. I did that for six years with taking like 14 different supplements every day, magnesium, coenzyme Q10, fish oils, um, tons of stuff. Uh, and that, that was somewhat manageable. But after the car accident, the migraines became unmanageable again. Just like most of us, we turned to the internet. Um, I was like, well, is there anything new? Has anyone come up with a new treatment for migraines since I last work looked about a decade ago, right? Um, and uh, found the work of uh, Angela Statton and her migraine protocol and started doing, which is a high salt, low carb diet is the initial protocol. Uh, but the way I got into carnivore is that in Angela Statton's group, I saw people talking about ZC and CD. And I was like, what is that? What does that mean? I'm sure everyone here knows the, the lingo, but back then I did it. Right. And so I was like, what is that? They're like, oh, that's carnivore. And I was like, oh, I know what that is. Cause I'm, I'm in the psych, I'm in the mental health field. So I followed Jordan Peterson closely. I'd actually met Jordan Peterson, uh, before this time and, um, knew about his daughter and her struggles 
And I knew about carnivore a year before trying actually. Um, and since then the rest is kind of history. I mean, I think I did keto ish for like two weeks. I remember having like a tuna avocado salad, but like in, in the Angela Staten group and other groups, I kept getting yelled at by my macros. And I was like, I, I can't, I don't know. I just can't, I can't math. Um, <laughs> and so, um, I, I was like, oh, just steak, just me. I can do that. That's easy, <laughs> you know? And the way I started out was I would have steak with like yellow squash and zucchini because they were like, oh, those are the absolute like lowest carb uh, vegetables, right? Um, and so I was doing that with some mushrooms. And within like a couple of weeks of doing that, my mushrooms went bad and my zucchini went bad. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I'll just eat the steak then and just not buy zucchinis and mushrooms and stuff anymore. Problem and from then, yeah, exactly. And from then that's been it. And, you know, it's gone through my carnivore eating has gone through many different kinds of stages and, and renditions. Um, you know, I was on a big New York steak phase. I was on a, a big, uh, you know, ground beef phase. I still do a lot of ground beef, still love ground beef. Um, I think you get a lot done with just run of the mill store-bought ground beef like yep. for real. Um, a lot of simple. healing with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, played with a little bit of fasting. Um, the new experiment now is to eat as much as I can. So I don't fast anymore. Essentially, I don't do any 18 hour, 16 hour fasting. I'm doing three raw eggs in the morning. I'm having a cooked breakfast after that. I'm doing ground beef for lunch. I'm doing, so I'm eating like four to five times a day right now. And I'm actually loving it. Um, and so, yeah, just seeing that experiment. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what stage it's in. I'm welcome to take questions. Uh, I try to keep it brief because I know there's many people that want to share their stories, things like that, but yeah, I am. I also do coaching. So I've coached some people I've done. I coach people with migraines, not migraines, mental health, anxiety, depression, huge mental health issues as a teenager, child, et cetera, probably had chronic severe depression starting at age 10 to be honestly, um, that's all resolved. I have self-confidence, I have self-esteem. When I look in the mirror, I don't see a bag of dung. I see a real bright, shining person now. And I really love that, you know, and it that's, takes a while, but you get That's there. awesome. So um, your migraines are completely manageable now. Yeah, I mean, I get the occasional headache, I'll get something and that usually happens if a I'm not sleeping well, I've got poor sleep, or I stayed up too late, something like that. B, uh, I go off diet. So I eat something I shouldn't have. Uh, last week, I got a bit of a migraine because ironically, I have a best friend that has a honey company that makes and sells honey, he's got hives, and it's actually from Hawaii. So it's extra super rare honey, right? And uh, he sent some to some family members of mine. Obviously, he didn't send me any because he knows he, he shouldn't. But I went to my aunt's house. She's like, oh, your, your, your friend uh, sent me some honey. You should try it. And it was cacao chocolate honey and cinnamon honey. And I was like, ooh, oh, I got to try it. So I got like a quarter teaspoon of each. And the next day I had like a migraine. And I was like, yep, it was the honey. So I know for me, honey's a no-go, but you got to try it once. Um occasional fries, but I, but see, what's beautiful about carnivore diet and figuring out your health is that before carnivore, my migraines were almost a complete mystery because it yeah. could have been sleep. It could have been stress, could have been emotional, could have been food, but I didn't know what food. Um, but with, with having so many other things simplified, it's like, okay, I know what I'm doing and I know the consequences of this action and it gives me the power to make the choice. And the clients I work with, I'm always like, listen, I'm about empowering you to make your choice. If you, if you know what the consequences are gonna be, but if you're gonna make that choice, I'm gonna support you, you know, unless it's terribly dangerous within reason, right? Um, but it's like, but then when you make that choice and you're in pain the next day or whatever your symptom is, you don't get to come at me and yell at me about it because we already had this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's your choice. You've made it, you know, buy the ticket, take the ride. 
you know? And so that's, that's kind of how I am. And that's how I am with myself. I'm not being a jerk to people or anything. I can, some of my clients do can think that I'm a bit rough with them, but it's the mindset that I have for myself. I'm not putting them up to any standard that I don't put myself to. That's the exact same talk I tell myself is that, Hey, you did it. You did it to yourself. You're responsible. You got to ride this out. Do your fasting, do your drinking water, do your electrolytes, do what you got to do, do your ice packs, whatever it is, but you don't get to cry, complain, play victim that like, Oh, you're in pain now. Cause you decided to have that food or whatever. And so that's just, that's just my mindset, you know? Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Justin. I think you have an incredible story and you are my favorite uh, durable carnivore. <laughs> you are carnivore durable for sure um, with all the car accidents and, and everything. Yeah. So in April 2019, I got hit while I was inside a car. In July of 2019, I got hit by a car while I was outside of a car as a pedestrian. So that's why people, the joke is carnivore durable because- yep no broken bones or anything like that from both accidents. So kind of, yeah, unbreakable, I guess. Amazing. Amazing. So for people to get a hold of you, Justin, um, they can reach you at, on Instagram. That's the best place. Yeah, probably at alloutlife.carnivore. Yeah. At alloutlife.carnivore on Instagram. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Emily. Hi guys. I'm Emily Harvo. Um, I just wanted to, um, compliment Justin on his, his coaching work. And I hired him for just a, a couple of issues in my family, but, um, you know, I, I've got some teenagers that are kind of wondering about their next step and this and that. And he just, you know, helped, help one of my, one of, one of them through that. And then I, well, another one of my teenagers has horrible migraines. And so, gosh, I think we just did one session and it's just, I think we just, just once. And, she learned so many tips and tricks that have really helped her. And so she's one that absolutely is, I, I of all my kids, only one of them is really carnivore. Um, the other ones are, you know, we're kind of key to our carnivore, eat whatever they want when they're with their friends or whatever. Um, but I just, I just want to thank Justin for that. And um, that was just, has been wonderful. And just to say that, you know, just these little, these, these hiring a carnivore coach is what I think. Like if you're going to hire a coach for something and you hire a carnivore coach, you're going to get so much fundamental healing. Um, and so I don't know, I love what y'all are doing. I love what you're doing, Emily. I love what you're doing, Justin. And that was just my thank you. So I'm happy to share, but I don't want to hog the, yeah, no, other no, people want to <laughs> go ahead. Take, take, take a couple minutes and just give us, give us the overview of the your story. overview of my story. Well, this is where I'm at today is that I'm really excited because tomorrow is my one year anniversary carnivore. So, yeah, I'm just so excited. So we call that what a uh, carnivorsary, right? <laughs> yeah. And so uh, JC actually has, uh, she has some kind of Zoom going tomorrow. All, that's like a, uh, just a party, just a New Year's party where you can dress up and eat your food together and whatever. So I'm going to be in Zoom meetings all day tomorrow with um, SB Gang, but I'll try to pop in on that as well. Um, so yeah, so I made it a year. Um, I, my history is that I, I came to carnivore for weight loss. So sorry, you guys, it's so shallow. <laughs> no, it's, it's common. It's very common okay. and it ties into the health. It does. It ties into the health. So I have been on the health or weight loss journey for about four years now. And I started with, um, fasting. I just did a ton of, you know, intermittent fasting and Dr. Fung and Jen Stevens and all that. And so, um, I was still so addicted to sugar. So I, I say for weight loss, but it was really because here I had lost so much weight. I'd lost probably 90 pounds or no, maybe like a hundred, I lost 110 pounds through all these other things. Um, but I was still addicted. And so if you, that's not going to work long-term, if you're still stuck in carb addiction and sugar addiction, I still, you know, and I was already becoming a little bit of a, of a leader and a mentor in that space and had tons and tons of um, relationships with people on social media, just that we were encouraging each other and all that, but I was still addicted. And I still was just so irritated that here I'd gone through all of this work and all these, but I was still so drawn. So, um, I got in the keto treat hole last holiday season and just got out of control, um, and was making all kinds of weird fat bombs and artificial sweeteners combined with fat and all this. 
Um, and so, yeah, so that, that was my motivator that I had heard about carnivore. I tried it just a little bit in 2019, but I had that initial weight gain and said, no way, I'm not going to do that. I didn't understand about the weight gain. Um, I'll tell you something recently I have been doing uh, kind of what Justin's doing is feasting and feasting and feasting. And, um, I did have, so I finally kind of had my carnivore weight gain and I actually did a scan yesterday and had put on uh, 20 pounds. So I haven't really told anybody that yet. Um, but I'm just at this place where I'm like, I'm fine with that. I'm proud of that. This is just my body in different forms and different versions. I look good. The weight gain doesn't look bad. Like it looks good. Cause it's all carnivore weight gain. It's a different kind of a weight gain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's been really great, but yeah, this, this is kind of disjointed, but, um, no, the things that have been amazing, I have just had, you know, the mental clarity has been incredible learning how to feast properly on carnivore has actually enhanced my fasting practice immensely. Um, and yeah, it's just been a great year. I'm so excited. I didn't plan to do it for a year. I plan to do it for a month and next year, it's the craziest thing. It's the craziest thing. And so, yeah, it's just been ongoing inspiration. I just love being in the space. I love hearing what people are doing and, um, it's made a night and day difference for me on, on a health body level, but on a mental level, you know, that's been the huge change is the stability and the freedom from addiction. And people think that this is so restricting. I found being carb addicted to be way more restricting yeah, than, yeah. yeah, this, this feels like freedom to me. So yeah, that's a nutshell. I've lost around 150 pounds overall. And, um, I've just loved all of the wonderful mental benefits of, of being in this lifestyle. It's been incredible. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Emily, so much for sharing. And thank you for all of your encouragement in this, in the carnivore community. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Claire. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I wanted to give you an update from last week. Oh, great. Uh, I, I was on holidays, in family holidays, the last couple of days. Okay. And I wanted to speak a little bit about the mental aspect from uh, the point of view of others. There was my sister, and when I was struggling with eating disorder, uh, she was not supportive at all. She always say that mental illness is not a sickness and that if I wanted to heal from anorexia, I should eat some big pot of Nutella and my life will be easy. I will gain my, my weight back and blah, blah, blah. So I went for these holidays and I didn't know what to expect. I'm really strong eating carnivore. So I stayed 100% carnivore during the all time. Wow, way to go. So it was really good. Um, as well, uh, I, I had all my meals with the family. Uh, they were having three meals a day. So I had three meals a day. Okay. Uh, so I was proud of me. And all the meals were full of all the time reflections like, ah, oh, Claire's, uh, Claire's breakfast, ah, oh, meat. Uh, don't you want some panetone? Don't you want some chocolate? Don't you want some crab? Don't you want some bread? Every time we were eating, it was like lots of lots of lots of reflections and, and words and and she, my sister, yeah, she, she, she was saying, like, you went from one eating disorder to another one. Ah, I've heard that so many times. And it's just like, I'm eating. <laughs> what are you, why are you complaining? Um, exactly. And because there was not enough food. Because I'm eating a lot. I'm feasting a lot. But like, they had like meat. We were nine and it was like three pounds of meat. Okay, that's my serving. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was challenging, but 
I had to go to the grocery and buy eggs, buy butter, and be able to survive. Uh, at the end, I'm quite proud of myself because I stayed for the carnivore. I ate only what I wanted to eat, so only ruminant food and eggs and butter. So it was good. That's I amazing. I realized that I ate less than usual anyway. Uh, yesterday, I came back home and I ate like crazy. You feasted. Yeah, but like a huge, huge, huge one. And I was, yeah, at the end, I was happy because I handled the days. I, okay, they are all with their smart, smartphone and not doing anything, not moving, moving their body, always drunk because it's holiday. So everybody's drunk. Oh, nice. I motivate people to go outside, like, okay, we need to do something for Claire to be happy. So we walk outside. I took care of the kids. I made them to color mandalas, stuff like this. So that was really the positive for me. I'm trying to focus on the positive. And yeah, I left my sister thinking that I'm still very ill, very ill, but I don't mind. I know where I am. I know what I'm doing with Carnivore and I'm proud of myself. I am so proud of you. That's amazing. And I'm, I'm so glad that you shared that with us because I think we think that once we correct these things in our lives, that like all the problems are going to go away, but we have to navigate as a well person, our lives, you know, and, and, and those relationships you know, because what made your sister have that kind of toxic response before she still has a toxic response, regardless of your wellness and your health. Um, and so I love the way that you responded to that and that you see yourself as the healthy one. I am seeing the one like the healthy one. And I would love one day that my family will see me as a healthy person and not a man mental sick person. But it will be, I think, really, really long. Yeah. To um, change my mind. And they are, they are sick, really. You know, I spent three days and I, they have been sober maybe two mornings. So for me, it's like they have the problem. And there were too yeah. many because I was not laughing the same because I was not drunk. But yeah, when you when you speak about stupid stuff, I'm not drunk. I, I'm, I cannot laugh. Exactly. Um, it was like crazy. But yeah, but I'm the weird one. I'm eating meat and I'm not drinking alcohol. I'm the weird one. I'm the sick one. Anyway, I know I'm not here anymore and... And I'm not sick anymore, and and I'm I'm good on my journey, and I would keep going this way, but it was hard. Yeah, I am so proud of you, Claire, and I'm so glad that you can come here and share with us, and we can give you that support to let you know that we are proud of you, even though I'm not your sister. Um, I hope that my words um, are louder than hers, and say how proud I am of you. The thing is, I believe on your world and not on hers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sober, so. <laughs> That's a big difference. And I know that you can understand because uh, you went through similar stuff, not the same sickness, but you went through similar stuff. And I I'm already hoping that in the future, people will see me just like a healthy person. They don't, don't see me anymore as a sick person. That's... I won't be sick anymore, never. I'm not going back on the road I was. I, I'm just keep, I just keep going and I will continue healing everything that has to be healed. That's it. Absolutely. Well, and, and unfortunately, I wish I could tell you, um, it's almost three years now. March or February of, of this year will be two, three years that I've been eating this way. Um, and, uh, in April, it will be three years that I've had no manic or depressive episodes, but I still have family that see me as mentally ill. Yeah. I still have family that don't want me at their house. I still have 
um, you know, friends who just are waiting for me to fall apart. And so I have found that, that using that as fuel has been my best thing, not using that as a distraction. Um, and what I want you to, what I want to encourage you to do is to surround yourself with people like this, that are in this meeting yeah. that are, are saying, we see your wellness. We don't see your mental illness. We see your health, um, because you are so worthy of that. And, and it, and it, it's tough. And there are days where I'm sitting there and I didn't get invited to that, you know, gathering or whatever. And I'm like, dang, they still think I'm crazy. But then again, I'm like, it's their loss. Like it's their loss that they don't see this. And what I've noticed is my wellness for some reason is a reflection of their illness. They don't want to see what is in the mirror (laughs) with what they're doing. So it's probably more of what, what uh, your sister's going through. She doesn't like that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing Claire. I loved your update. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you guys are more than welcome to keep off camera if you want to be um, anonymous um, and, uh, you know, change out your name on the screen. Um, But I'm going to record this and put it up on YouTube every week um, because I feel like the world needs to know. There's a lot of people who are so scared that they won't even come to a meeting like this, Um, but they'll watch it on YouTube. And so I just want to open up the, the, um, floor to anybody who wants to either ask a question about, um, this way of eating or about mental health about this, or somebody who wants to tell us their story of how they have broken their addiction to sugar and carbs, just raise your hand or you can raise your hand in the camera, or you can raise your hand, uh, in the meeting, or I'll just call on you. (laughs) All right, Amy, you're up. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming at uh-huh. all. Not uh-huh. even a little bit. <laughs> I was like, she's about to, yep, there it is. <laughs> tell, okay, us, so- tell us your carnivore story or keto story or breaking sugar addiction story. My, my story, um, I, when I was 13, was put on hormones um, because my depression, my anxiety, my cycle, you name it, totally screwed up. Um, so I was, I was put on birth control pills at the age of 13 to try to fix it. Um, fast forward to 20, I decided I want to have a family. So of course you got to get off of the birth control pills, got off birth control pills, had one kid was doing okay. Uh, had the second kid and got hit by severe postpartum depression. And my mom has Hashimoto's disease, um, really kind of borderline bipolar, uh, but never quite over the line far enough. Uh, so, you know, kind of knew it was, it was coming. It was unavoidable. It's my genetics. I have no choice. Right. So they medicate me, um, after my son and they said, well, it's just temporary until you, you know, your hormones level out again, and then you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, 15 years later, still on medications now up to six medications because they're never enough. It's never working. And I actually ended up getting hospitalized for it. Um, I had a suicide watch called on me when I had a six week old baby, Ugh. I had gotten gluten and I had already been gluten free for like 10 years, uh, got gluten and had a massive anxiety and panic attack in my psychiatrist's office. Wow. So she takes one look at my baby, looks back at my husband, looks at me and goes, how often does this happen? And we said, only when I get gluten, of course she thinks I'm insane. Yeah. She calls a suicide watch on me. So I'm taken away for three days into a facility where they can watch me and make sure that I'm not going to hurt myself or anyone else. So I had to be super, super, super careful while I was there not to get cross contamination and have another episode. Anyways, uh, I, thankfully get out after three days. And I've decided, okay, I have to find a way to be happy because if I can just be happy, then I can get off the medications at this point in time, I'm 275 pounds. And I've convinced myself that if I can just lose weight, I'll be happy because that's what true (laughs) happiness is, is, is being thin. Right. Yeah. So I 
I'm looking at all of these diets. We've tried everything. I see this recipe book in the grocery store for keto. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't, it's a fad diet. It's not going to work. I don't want to do it. Finally gave in, did keto. Six months later, I woke up one morning and I could feel something was different in my brain. Wow. I could just, it was physical. And so I, I looked over at my husband and I said, babe, I think I can come off my meds. And my poor sweet husband looked at me. He goes, no, Please, no. <laughs> after all we'd been through, I mean, I've been medicated, you know, since I was 13 years old. So I completely understand his reaction, but he, I told, I said, no, really, there's something different. And he's like, if you really think you can, we'll try. So over six months, I weaned off all of those medications because you have to go slow. Those are some hardcore meds. You cannot just, no, that's physical brain damage there. So, um, six months I weaned off very slowly and I was doing fantastic until we had a death in the family. Our 14 year old niece passed away very unexpectedly. And I found myself starting to worry and getting really anxious about all of my children. What if, what if I'm not doing, what if this happens? And I could feel the descent on that slippery slope. And I had heard about these crazy people who thought that they could just survive with just meat. (laughs) It was like the ultimate mental healing diet. And I'm going, you know what? I don't care. It's worth a try. Because anything is better than going back into that dungeon, into that pit that I just broke free from. So we were going to do it in January just for the fun of it. But this happened at the end of November. And I was like, "Uh, babe, I'm doing it now. And he was like, go. He's like, I'll join you in January. But yes, if you think it's going to work, do it. Two weeks later, all of the anxiety, all of the depression, everything is gone. And I'm even better than I was on keto. Like I thought keto was like the ultimate, I'm going to be there forever. And, um, then it was like, uh, yeah, no, there's a whole new level. And so that's, that was my carnivore journey. Um, I ended up being pretty super strict carnivore for a couple of months. And then I found myself actually unable to swallow Mm. them with no seasoning, no sauces, no nothing. So I'm like 98% carnivore. I had to bring back in a few sauces and spices because now I'm back up to being able to eat like 2000 calories a day. Um, but I will never, ever, ever go back to keto. I will never go back to gluten-free. I will never go back to standard American diet. I will include the littlest amount of other things that I can to get my body to agree with me (laughs) on eating. I love that. But so for my kids, we've got a ton of children were blended. We have nine all together. Awesome. Um, And so five of them are low carb, uh, while they're here with us, I'll let them, you know, do a few other things off plan. Cause I don't want them to swing so far the other way when they get free. Yes. They see the benefits for themselves. Uh, my 16 year old, I was letting her try some rice. She really wanted rice. And I was like, okay, you can, you can have some rice, but you got to do your protein first. She actually took herself off of the rice. Wow. She was like, mom, I'm breaking out really bad. Like I'm exhausted. I don't have the energy. She's like, as much as I love it, it's just not good for me. I was Uh like, oh yes. So that's, that's kind of our family's story. My husband, uh, next to me, he's saying, hi Richard. Yeah. He's, he's, he's watching lady carnivory right now. He's catching up on some of her videos. Nice. Okay, he's always researching what else somebody else is doing yes but yeah jc has a jc has a live tomorrow too if you guys are i didn't know if you saw that amy i just joined Thanks. her group and i haven't figured out where everything is yet so oh, okay we'll come tomorrow and you're supposed you can wear a costume <laughs> she has a party tomorrow <laughs> glad i'm finding this out now <laughs> yeah you can you can dress up oh my gosh that's hilarious i love it but yeah that's we're going to be carnivore forever. We, we feel better, um, you know, with the, the meat based 99%. I mean, he's more carnivore. We still do our coffee. Sometimes we take it out. Sometimes we bring it back. Um, but it's wherever my body needs to be at that time. 
And who knows, maybe I'll be able to get rid of the spices and the sweeteners and the, well, not the sweeteners, but the sauces later on and, and be fine. But I know I still have healing to do and I, it's still a journey and a process. So I'm constantly tweaking and figuring out what works for right now. Absolutely. And I love that. I love that you're listening to your body. Um, and you didn't get into that dogma of, you know, no, I'm carnivore. I'm going to do just carnivore. You re- you recognize that I'm going to fail. And so what's the point? The point is compliance. The point is for us to heal. Um, and so I love that you made that, um, that adjustment, Amy, for yourself. And I didn't want to. I was like, no, dag nabbit, I'm going to be a super strict carnivore. And this guy right here was like, babe, you're not listening to your body. He was like, you literally spend your time on YouTube telling people to listen to their bodies and you're not listening. Wow. And I was like, but it's not working with me. (laughs) He's like, true story. So he was the guy that's over here. He's like, honey, you got to stop. He's like, you cannot force your body to do something. It's not ready to do. And I was like, this is why I love you. This yeah. is why you are my perfect match because you're telling me to stop being stupid. <laughs> and the goal is to stay out of the psych ward. Yes. The goal is like, so who cares where, which way you go to get there? You're still hitting your goal. You know yeah. what I mean? And not having the weight. I mean, how much weight have you lost? Like, come on. 120 pounds. Yeah. Like, come on. Like who cares that you're eating sauces? <laughs> That's amazing. I'm like, I just have to keep telling myself that I'm like, yes, no, I, it, it's been an amazing journey. And if I don't go through it and then share it, then I, I want people to be able to benefit from, you know, Emily, your story. Let's tell people, yeah, it sucked. I felt like I sucked, mm-hmm. but guess what? I've made it through it. And now I get to help other people. And I love your one video. You're like, I'm going to keep going back into that pit and pulling as many people out as I can. I watched that. And I was like bawling, like ugly crying. I was like, yes, yes, that's it. So yeah, a hundred percent. This is the way we're going to be forever for health. Um, and, and I hope that my children follow suit. The older ones that have moved out are like, Oh no, my metabolism is great. I don't need that migraines and, you know, joint pain and aches. And I'm like, Oh, you let me know when you're ready to fix it. You you let me know. I love you. Yeah. And, and love is the divine solvent. You know what I mean? If we come down hard on them and we're just like, no, you are going to eat this. We're going to screw them up in the head and they're going to be rebellious and be like, no, I'm eating the bread. No, I'm eating the sugar. You know, no, I'm whatever. But if we come to them in love and say, I want what's best for you, here's an option, do what you want. You know, I really think that that's so much more effective. And the way I kind of have to talk to myself about it, I ate straight standard American diet for 38 years and it took me that long to get really, really sick. Yes, I could have been better mentally. But that was kind of the the culmination of everything was the 38 years and I survived. So I think that they can handle a whole lot more and a little bit here and there. I'm like, I just, every day I'm like, okay, you know what? That you get to live your own life and you get to have your own journey and your own story. And if I protect them from everything, they're not going to have a story. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then it won't mean anything to them. They'll just be like, yeah, my mom, my mom, my mom you know, my mom is crazy. They don't have their own story. They don't know their own experiment. Everybody has to do their own experiment to know what they react to and what they don't react to because everybody's different. Everybody's different. If everyone was the same, I would be out of a job (laughs) because it would be just eat meat, drink water and thrive. And it would be fantastic. And, and I tried that and it didn't work. So So where can people reach you? Um, You are on Instagram at carnivore angel, Mm -hmm. carnivores Mm -hmm. angel and on YouTube carnivores angel. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have a website? Same thing with Facebook carnivores angel. The website is carnivoresangel.com. Awesome. And I also just started the mighty network uh, over there. So that is also carnivores angel. Awesome. Consistent. 
I love it. I love it. So um, if you if you want to follow follow Amy and go um, go find out what she's doing with that her Mighty Network, um, it is amazing. Thank, thank you, you so Amy. Very much. You're welcome. And thank you, Richard, for being being her voice of reason and keeping her healthy and alive. We're grateful. <laughs> it's muted. That's go. okay. I don't have much to say anyway. <laughs> that's a that's a first <laughs> like wait deer in the headlights look yeah. awesome got it pick on richard day don't worry <laughs> gotta be the sun we gotta start the new year out right somehow right yeah we there you go you're right there you go thank you for sharing amy on the spot i appreciate that so much you're so welcome you are such a blessing <laughs> All right. Um, so anybody else have a question about carnivore, um, about what the heck we're talking about? Um, or do you want to tell us your story? Raise your hand um, in the meeting, or um, I can tell you guys my story again. <laughs> okay, Catherine, go ahead. Um, I've only got a few minutes, um, yeah. but I, um, I'm at the very start of my journey. Awesome. I'm sorry about the wind if it's noisy. That's okay. Um, this is my view. So beautiful. Um, so I got sicker than a human possibly could do, um, with <sighs> dying <laughs> but I'm still alive man um I got homeless I got jobless I got familyless I got all all of the shit and it all started taking metazapine mm. uh, and the damage that that drug did to my brain is beyond anything that I can even begin to imagine of or articulate but I'm sure some of you have been there uh, and I I thought I wasn't gonna live very much longer so I got on an airplane and went to a retreat in Marbella in Spain and they didn't know what the hell to do with me but one of the guys there said you need to be on the carnivore diet wow. and I've never this I've never nothing and for eight weeks I've been trialing every which way and I'm I've basically in eight weeks I've quit every last thing that could cause me harm apart from apart from coffee. Um, today I ate a bowl of chicken and butter. I swam in the sea. I made a friend, I did a yoga class. I still feel horrendous every day, but something's happening and I'm making it happen. And I feel from this community that there's not just love, there's hope and I know I know in every cell of my body, I can get well now. I've been given the tool and it's incredible. So thank you. Thank you for everybody in this space. Uh, absolutely. Catherine, you are such a fighter. You are such a fighter. So many people would have just laid down and said, all right, take me. All right, take me. I remember I had a cold, really, really bad cold like six months ago. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, this is the worst thing in the whole world. You know, I'm going to die. And I, I, and it was, I was in bed for eight days. I cannot imagine being to the point that you were at and continuing to fight. That tells me that there is great purpose for your life. It already is. Uh, even this conversation is purpose for my life. I believe that. I absolutely believe that. When and I I'm, come back years time and I'm a sparkly motherfucker, sorry for swearing. That's okay. Then we'll know what the next phase is. But for now, 
I'm going to keep eating the meat and I'm going to keep saying thank you and I'm going to keep uh, keep doing what I've got to do to stay alive. Awesome. Well, keep us updated, Catherine. We're going to be here every Saturday. Um, I would cool. love I would love to watch your sparkle come back. Um, even though I still see it right now, I still see that sparkle. <laughs> Um, but I can't wait to watch you shine. When when I feel more articulate and um, my cognitive capacities are come back more, I'll be able to say more about my experience. Not a problem. Thank you for what you have shared with us. That's such a gift today. Thank you, Catherine. Such a blessing. Awesome. So um, anybody else want to jump in? We've got about 15 more minutes. Um, anybody have a question? Um, or do you have, you want to tell us your story with carnivore or keto or any kind of eating, uh, anything to break the sugar? Karen, how's it going? Hey, good, good. Um, I figure I'll jump on here because yeah. there's a little lull. <laughs> Uh, I had a little, I had a lot of pork this week. I had, uh, made a rib roast for Christmas and that got eaten within a day afterwards. And I also made a ham for the kids and stuff. Karen who I saw that change. Anyway, so, so um, I've been, eat, I've been eating a lot of ham lately, sometimes twice a day, maybe in scrambled eggs, maybe just a plate of ham, a couple, whatever, some other sides, but a lot of ham. And two nights ago, I'm laying in bed. I'm like, wow, my shoulder, I, my shoulders hurt a little bit. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable and I just didn't feel right. Two nights in a row, my sleeping. So yesterday I'm like, screw that. I'm not eating any more of that ham, no more pork. I gotta have some beef. So I had a ribeye and I had some other sides yesterday. And last night I, I woke up this morning, I'm like, I feel great. I didn't have any of that problem. So that darn pork, I still have some left. I think I'm gonna give it to my husband, throw it away or throw it in the freezer or something. It's just. I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> I usually don't throw away meat, but I think I'm ready to do it. Isn't it crazy? I remember when I started on this journey and I, I started reacting to chicken and I was like, are you kidding me? Like now I, now there's certain, you know, meats that I can't have. Like, this yeah. is ridiculous. Um, but I love that you're listening to your body, you know, that you're not just like, oh, go, it's okay. It's carnivore or whatever. Like you're yeah. really listening to your body because it's fine tuning what is best for you. Right, right. That's all I want to share. Somebody else can talk. <laughs> That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Karen. That's yeah. great. All right. Anybody else have a question about carnivore or about keto or about breaking your sugar addiction? Or want to share your story? Marsha, are you trying to talk? Here, let me unmute you. Um, I cannot figure out how to unmute. Marsha. Marsha, I can't hear you. If you right click oh, on her picture. There you go. There okay. you go. I had to click that. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, so what about coffee? And, um, I'm sure the coffee I drink, um, little Nescafe, Nescafe, single pack, hazelnut flavor. Um, and then I put cream or heavy whipping cream, just two teaspoons. And then, um, sweet leaf sweetener drops. Um, and that's probably all not good. Um, a, the coffee isn't the best. Um, and actually it's three fifty nine dollars a pack for 16, uh, single serves. And I have two cups of coffee a day. So actually if I had ground coffee or something, that would be less expensive. But um, what are your feelings on the uh, sweet leaf or, you know, stevia? 
to ask? Awesome question. Thank you so much for asking this question. I'm actually going to toss this, this question to Amy, um, because I feel that she can better answer this question. Um, because I am on the other end of the spectrum where I don't eat any stevia, any sweetener, anything, because it's really messes me up. But right. Amy, Amy, can you jump in and, and give us your two cents? Yeah, absolutely. So coffee, first of all, if you're going to have it, I would love to see you switch to an organic coffee because coffee is one of the top sprayed crops in the entire country. Okay. Um, now I'm sorry in the world, not just the country in the world. Um, so pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, you name it. So if you are going to drink coffee, I highly suggest that you do organic. Um, I can feel a huge difference if I drink something from a restaurant or from a family member's house versus my own organic blend um, that I know that I am safe with. Some people find great benefits with coffee. Some people find that getting rid of it completely changes their entire health. So if in the future you ever think that maybe you'd be willing to try 30 days or 60 days without it, I strongly encourage you to do that because you may find that you get really good health benefits from getting away from the coffee. And then when you try to bring it back in, you will feel kind of nasty. And then it gives you a, a, a piece about what you need to do for you personally. Um, and, and so experimenting is huge, but making sure that it's organic would be number one. Number two, I actually prefer to do an egg in my coffee versus any kind of dairy, because a lot of people have problems with dairy and they just don't even know it. So getting rid of the dairy, um, can really help with cognition. It can help with skin problems. It can help with digestive issues, but I like creamy coffee. I do not love black coffee even a little bit. So what I do is I take a whole raw egg. And I drop it down into the bottom of my empty coffee cup. And then you take a milk frother and you beat the snot out of it. And then you very slowly pour in your hot coffee and it doesn't cook the egg, but it makes it nice and creamy. And then by leaving the white in there, you're getting a lot more protein as well. So, which is always a a bonus as for the sweeteners, it's very individualized. Um, I actually use them right now as a tool to get me to eat more because I've reached a point where my chronic under eating is still, I have to keep it in check. If I don't drink coffee in the morning, I could go days without eating without a problem. So I use the sweetener to trigger my insulin to make me hungry. Um, a lot of people say, oh, well, Stevia doesn't affect your blood sugar. For a lot of people, it doesn't affect your blood sugar, but it does affect your insulin because our bodies are made to, if you taste something sweet, your body is expecting a carb load to come. So it kicks your insulin up in preparation for those carbs to come. Well, when we eat something like stevia or monk fruit or even erythritol, there's no carbs with it. So you have biohacked your body and tricked it. So it pumps up the insulin. So whatever blood sugar you have floating around in your body, which should be about a teaspoon in your entire body, it's going to take a lot of that. And it's going to stick it into the cells because that's what insulin does. It opens up your cells to put away the energy. Well, then you're going to start feeling a little bit hypoglycemic. You're going to be a little bit shaky. You're going to kind of have the mental fog, maybe even a little bit of nausea that's telling you, Hey, you got low blood sugar. You need to eat. So with coffee, I always recommend to people, I want you to try to eat first and have your coffee as a dessert because your hormones have already been activated. Everything is already where it should be. So if you are now drinking, you know, that egg, or if you do decide to go with the cream or the artificial sweeteners, uh, whether they're keto safe or not, then your hormones are where they should be to be able to utilize and break down everything that you are consuming versus if you're not chewing, then a lot of those hormones aren't activated accurately. So even though you're drinking an egg, it's still not going to trigger your hormones the same way. So I highly recommend that you use coffee as a dessert 
um, with your breakfast. And then, you know, yes, you go ahead, throw down a couple of eggs real quick, and then you can sit there and enjoy your coffee uh, and go from there. Awesome. What a thorough answer. Marsha, any questions? Um, could you throw out a name brand for your organic coffee? My husband oh. went and fetched it for me. Oh, it's what a good husband. It's called Hope Coffee. Um, this is actually my parents' church. They run a, a missionary. Um, there's an entire thing, and this is their brand. Um, okay. And they say, because I've talked to them before, and they also have a, oh, yeah, it's hopecoffee.com. That's their website. Okay. Um, so they say they cannot claim that it is strictly organic because there could be other crops around there that get sprayed, but they do not spray theirs and they're like at the top of the mountain, but you know, legally they, they don't say that they are organic, but if I can drink it and not have any side effects, it's about as organic as it's going to get. Um, and then for their decaf, they use a Swiss water process. So if ever you get to the point where you're ready to um, try to wean off the coffee, switching to decaf can be very helpful. But Swiss water process for your decaf is super important because otherwise they use chemicals to decaffeinate the coffee. And wow. Drinking more chemicals. Um, hmm. And so is that ground coffee? Yes, you can get it ground or you can get it whole bean either way. Um, we, we do the ground. My dad does the whole bean. So it's just really your preference. Okay. And then um, they have all kinds of flavors. Like they have a, a light blend, the dark roast, they have a Mexican kind of a, they, they have a whole bunch to choose from. Um, we, we've gotten rid of coffee. We brought it back. We got rid of it. We brought it back. I feel better with the coffee. Um, and I may take it away again someday to see if I have better benefits without it. And then when I bring it back, I'm still waiting for those negative side effects. So far, it's all the positive ones. So I'm trying to be as healthy with my coffee as I possibly can be. Thank you, Amy. That You're was helpful. Welcome. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah. And also in the chat, um, there's a, a suggestion of Bulletproof. Um, yes, that is a very good brand, um, that a lot of people have used, um, because they specialize in not having any of the mold, um, in, in their coffee. Um, and I know that, um, uh, my dad drinks that every day. And does he put the MCT oil and something else in it? Dad, do you want to talk? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I use uh, the uh, Bulletproof coffee uh, because uh, it uses the Swiss method and uh, Dave Asprey, the founder of that, uh, he's insane about getting rid of mycotoxins. Uh, so it's very clean. And uh, yeah, I go all the way with the butter and the, uh, the uh, brain octane oil, uh, you know, just once a day. But uh, that's my happy coffee. So and where do you get, um, well, do you go to bulletproof.com? Yep, that's where it's at. Yeah, yep. and it, Dave no longer runs that. I just read his book. I um, can't even think of the title right at the moment, but Fast yeah. This Way, I think. Yeah, but, I, I um, started out keto with him and then went into carnivore, so... You know, I, I still, the Bulletproof coffee is left over from that, but I enjoy it. And then the MCT oil. Well, where I do use you... the Brain Octane oil, which is more refined. Oh, where do you get that? Same place. Which is Bulletproof? Yes. Oh, Brain Octane? Yep. Okay. It's just, I think it's Capillic Acid, Emily. Is that what it's called? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for the question, Marsha. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's time we get, we get this question often. So I know that there's people that want to hear this, um, and want to, want to know, uh, you know, about coffee and about sweeteners and about cream. Um, and, um, I think that's it. I don't think I'm missing anything in the chat. I mean, people definitely had some good ideas about, um, 
Uh, oh, Danny said um, Rainforest is a brand at Costco. So um, that might be, and she said it's a good price. So Rainforest. Okay. Is a brand at Costco. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for such an incredible meeting um, and for just meeting up with me. I'm going to be here every Saturday. Um, if you want to join and jump in, ask a question, tell your story. Um, it, you know, it's just, it, it is what you need it to be. That's what this space is. Um, and for us to continue healing. So um, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Emily. Bye.